Let's give the Lord some praise. He's a good God. So glad to be here. And what a wonderful place to be. And, and I've been gone kind of for the last few weeks. You know, I went to Arizona. We're launching a church in Arizona, and that looks like it's going great. But there's no place to be, there's no place in the whole world to be like at home. Nice to see you. I believe that we're here, but I also believe this, God is here. And all that means is that the impossible can happen. That means you could be set free, today of a depression that they diagnosed you and God says I undiagnose you I reverse it that could happen today someone could get healed of pancreatic cancer whoa you know when you get pancreatic cancer it's really a death sentence but Jesus resurrected from the dead how many believe in that Jesus? He's alive right here. That's what the song's saying. You're alive. You have hope. And if we follow the Lord, we can follow him. This is what God, this is for sure. Victory's in your future. Defeat is not in your future. The best days, come on, you might be going through a trial, but the best days of your life, come on, they're not behind you. God's telling someone right now, stop looking backwards. I got so much more for you ahead of you. Now, I, I'm not saying that you're not going through some difficulties maybe right now, trials right now. I'm going to give you a secret. That's why you need Jesus. That's all. He can help. Today we're going to be talking about a lady in the Bible. We don't know her name, but if I get to give her a nickname, I'd name her Tenacious Tammy. Tenacious Tammy. So we're going to be talking a little about Tenacious Tammy. She's just tenacious. And this story that we're going to go through today is very interesting because Jesus traveled over 50 miles walking or maybe on donkey I don't know how we got there but it wasn't like 50 miles in today's terms because you could go to LA in an hour but to travel 50 miles walking that might be a whole day trek and he's going to a certain city that was an outcast city that means the they were known for being evil they were known for being their enemies of God's people and Jesus travels to this town looking for this one woman in this town. And he's going to use her today to teach us what tenacious faith looks like. I'm going to show you tonight through her experience on how to pray and get some results. And to get some results, you're going to have to learn this word. You're going to have to be tenacious. Jesus literally in this story that we're going to read today takes this woman to the limits. And he says after I take her to the limits of her faith, I did it because I knew what was in her. I didn't take her to the limits to cause her to fail. I took her to the limits to display her faith to all of you. And in this story, in this story, Jesus could conclude, if she did it, you can do it. She didn't have the right upbringing. She didn't have the right surroundings. But there was something that she had that caused a miracle to happen. And I'll tell you what it was. It was tenacious faith. Tammy had Tenacious Tammy had some tenacious faith. So we're going to read through that story tonight. We're going to, and maybe you can see yourself here. 
And by the time you're done, whatever you're fighting for, I believe it could give you some tenacity within you not to give up, not to quit. You're in it to win it. Not win in it. Come on. You're going to come out of this with a testimony. Come on. You're going to come out of this with a testimony. You're not going to come out of this. You're not going to come out of this with a demonic testimony. You're going to come out of it with a Jesus testimony. You're not going to quit. You're not going to give up. You're going to press through and you're going to get everything. Come on. That God has for you in Jesus name. Lord Jesus, speak to us tonight. We thank you for the worship team and that we're able to lead us together to magnify, to praise you, to thank you, to behold you. We thank you. And I'm asking you, Lord, to take this word, teach us tonight about a woman. We don't have her name, but you know who she is. Just like many of us in this room, you know exactly who we are and what we're going through. And one moment can change our lives forever. Make this the moment. We accept that this is the moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated, so glad to see you here. Let's turn to Matthew, uh, Matthew 15, verse 21, and we're going to read a story about a lady that I call her Tenacious Tammy. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Remember, that was a 50-mile trek. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. So her problem was she had a little girl that she raised. As this little girl gets older, I don't know how a demon enters her daughter, but her daughter's probably lost her mind. Her daughter's tormented at night. Her daughter might be growling. Her daughter might be angry and evil. And, but she knows this. There's a demon that's causing her to suffer severely. It might have been a severe spirit of suicide where she wanted to kill herself. But this was her baby. And she knew this is not my girl. This is not who I raised. Something has taken her over. And she's wondering who can help her. And I'm sure that she probably went to all the psychiatrists in those days and counselors in those days and people that could help and maybe even some witch doctors. But she got worse. And she knew for sure that a demon has taken over my daughter. Jesus travels, travels 50 miles to meet this lady. She was important to the Lord. Now, in this city, there were other people that had similar situations, I'm sure. Daughters, sons that have been taken over by demons or severe pain, severe suffering. They were going through it. But she was the only one that came to Jesus with their problem. You know, tonight, I don't know what your problem is, but whatever your problem is, let's start practicing a little bit of what she's done. Come to Jesus and let him help you with what no one else can help you with. It can turn around. So she, she comes to Jesus and, he, and she, she says, my, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Some of the problems that we have today aren't just mental, aren't just emotional. Some of the problems that you're dealing with are just plain demonic. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And if you're here for the first time and you never heard about the devil, there's a God and there's a devil. And he wants, they say, where's the devil? Where does he work? He works mostly in your mind. He works mostly in your emotions. And what he wants to do is possess. That means he wants to take over that you become his instruments doing his dirty deeds. There's people that are doing things today, and maybe you're even in this room, that you never thought you would do. And it feels like almost something is taking you over. I have good news for you. Jesus can heal you, forgive you, and set you free of the cycle that you've been in. Let's give God some praise. Come on, let's acknowledge he's here in our town. 
He's here in this building. So she recognized who was there, but the scripture says, but Jesus, now this is where it gets tenacious, gave her no reply, not even a word. Like what? Jesus didn't reply. Remember, he's using her as an example to us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take her to the limits so you'll never have an excuse. And you also know what real faith looks like. It goes on. It goes on. We're going to read this a little bit more. Let's go. It goes on. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Now, that's getting worse. So she's, she comes to Jesus and says, Jesus. And she didn't lightly say this. She, the scripture says she was pleading. You know what pleading means? That she was crying out. She wanted a breakthrough, but she had passion behind this breakthrough. She was just not going through the motions. She was saying, my baby is demon possessed. And I heard that you cast out demons and you're the answer to my problem. So I'm here to let you know what problem I have. And I'm begging you, help me. Do you know why some people can't get breakthroughs? You're trying to look too pretty. Some people can't get breakthroughs because they got too much pride. Some people can't get breakthroughs because the devil tells you, you don't take all that. But you'll go to a Dodger game and yell your lungs out for just one run. The organ goes, da 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 You're like, charge! And you're thinking, the louder I scream, the better chance the Dodgers have to win. And that's okay because I like the Dodgers too. But be careful that you're not shouting and pleading for a team instead of shouting and pleading for your personal breakthrough. Some people cannot get a breakthrough and there's a reason they can't get a breakthrough. I'll say this, you're not passionate enough. And the other thing that she didn't do was ignore her issue. You got to be careful that you're not downplaying what you got. Some of the problems you have are really serious. And you can ignore them, and you can downplay them, but they're not going anywhere. There's a time you got to realize that my daughter ain't living right. And I got to start, I got to start interceding for her. I got to start shouting for her. I, she right now don't have the strength to pray, but I can stand in the gap right now and shout myself to death until she gets a breakthrough. There's some people right now in your life that they're not going to get a breakthrough until you step in and start fighting for them. And the reason they're not going to get a breakthrough is because they don't have the strength to fight. They're beat up. They're hurting. They're discouraged. They're depressed. They're lonely, they're fearful, they're losing their mind. But God made you her mama, and God made you her daddy, and God made you her sister, and God made you her brother, and he says, come on, I saved you. Will anybody fight for their family? She didn't start saying, well, I hope it'll go away. She was not going to let this opportunity pass her by. She was tenacious. Now, Jesus, it looks like he ignores her. You know why some people can't get a breakthrough? You're too time sensitive. This is what I mean. You don't have the endurance to get a breakthrough. If, if he doesn't do it like a microwave for you, you start thinking, well, I guess he didn't hear me. And then you start singing, instead of singing praise and worship, you're singing Frank Sinatra. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, it's not que sera, sera, it's I'm fighting for this. I know it's not, my, I know it's not God's will for my daughter to be possessed by a demon. I know it's not God's will for my daughter to be suffering emotionally the way she's suffering. Jesus, I know you're the answer. No one else can change my daughter's life and set her free. Jesus, you can do it. 
So right now, I'm pleading, I'm shouting at the top of my lungs, and I don't care how long it takes, there might be silence in the room, but the silence is not gonna come from me. The sh- I, there's a shout that's in me. I'm desperate for a breakthrough. Come on, is there anybody desperate for a breakthrough? You gotta get it. There's times that someone has to intercede or shout for you. But there's times that you got to shout for yourself. I'm done with these drugs. I'm done in the name of, I got to get set. I'm done with this anger. I, I'm done with this lust. I got to get set free. I'm tired of the devil displaying his works in me. I'm here to glorify God and I'm fighting for my breakthrough. So let's keep going. Now, Jesus don't say a word. You know what that means? That's why you need faith. (laughs) You don't need faith if everything's instant. You're not believing for what you see or have. You're believing on what you're believing for. That means all the facts, the evidence, the doctor's reports are against your promise, your vision, the things you're believing for, you're praying for. But I've learned just because it looks like there's silence doesn't mean that God is not on the move. You got to be able to have faith even when it looks quiet. There was a story in the Bible with a man named Daniel. He began to fast, fast to hear from God. On the first day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the second day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the third day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the fifth day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the sixth day of his fast and praying, he didn't hear nothing. On the seventh day of his fast, now it's a week. Come on, we're back to Sunday. He didn't hear nothing. Now at that point, would you think God's not answering? On the eighth day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the 10th day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the 11th day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the 15th day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. On the 20th day of his fast, he didn't hear nothing. But on the 21st day, he heard something. And there was an angel that came and told Daniel, I was so glad that you stayed with your tenacious faith. Because on the first day that you prayed, heaven sent me. I'm Michael the archangel. I've he come here to give you a message. But I had to fight some principalities and powers out there. I was fighting some demons. But while you were praying, I was fighting. I just needed for you to keep on praying. What God is saying, just because it looks like nothing happens, happening, it doesn't mean that God is not moving. Give God some praise if you believe that God is moving. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. God says I'm moving. Keep the faith going. Keep the praise going. Come on, keep the shout going. So, this is crazy. So Jesus don't say a word. It gets worse. Then his disciples said a word. A word. And they urged him to send her away. Jesus, tell her to go away, they said. She's bothering us with all her begging. Now thou, I know this would have offended some of us right out of our miracle. Some of us can get not, cannot get a miracle. I'll tell you why. You're too easily offended. You got faith that's easily offended. You don't have tenacious faith yet. Because when, you're, when you have a, a daughter that's demon possessed and you know what you're there for, you don't allow someone to distract you from your mission and your prayer. If you get offended, this is what problem. If you get offended with someone and they hurt your feelings and all you're doing is talking about who hurt you, how you were a victim, this is going to be your problem. You're not, no longer praying. You are now complaining. 
And I know this, you can't be praying and complaining at the same time. You need to make up your mind. No one's going to offend me out of my seat. No one's going to offend me out of my worship. No one's going to offend me out of my church. No one's going to offend me out of my prayer. No one's going to offend, offend me out of my breakthrough. I'm fighting for something. I don't know about all you guys in this crowd, but I'm fighting for something. So I'm going to keep on begging. Jesus, have mercy. So now the disciples, which are, which are Jesus' staff, You hear them say, hey, send her away, man. Can't you see, like, she's, she's nagging us while her praying. <laughs> At that point, I'd be like, ah, oh, man, this church is prejudiced, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, she probably, I mean, it would be easy. She was a Canaanite woman, and she was talking to an Israelite Jew. But it gets worse. So Jesus said, that now he says something. I'm telling you, I just so I want to know the context. Jesus is using her to teach us what faith is. So there's a purpose for him pushing her as far as he's pushing her. He's not pushing her to hurt her. He's pushing her to teach you. There's some things that you're going through right now. God says, I'm going to get you through, but I'm not trying to reach you. I'm trying to reach your mama. I'm trying to reach your uncle. I'm trying to reach your coworkers. And I want them to see you go through this trial and you're still praising me and you're still glorifying me and you're still going to church. They offended you, but you're still here. Come on. They talked about you, but you're still here. They rejected you, but you're still in position. Come on. You got a bad report, but there's still a praise in your spirit. So now, this is crazy, I'm telling you, this is tenacious Tammy. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. Baby, I was here for Israel. That's my mission. You're not Israel. You don't qualify. At that point, some of us would have walked out with an attitude, I can't. <laughs> Some of you guys, right there, your attitude would have come like, what'd you say? <laughs> Did you just say that? <laughs> <laughs> that you came for Israel, you didn't come for me? Are you telling me you got favorites and I'm not one of them? Are you? I wonder how many people left the church because they ran into an offensive thing that they didn't quite understand. And instead of having a testimony of your daughter getting delivered and healed, you got a testimony of leaving your church. And God said, I'm working all this out. Stop running. Stick it out. Men ought to always pray and not give up. Men and women should always pray but not give up. How are you going to get a prayer answered that you're giving up on? Like, come again, Jesus. You came for Israel, not me. Hmm. Let's see your response. But she came. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but my daughter's demon possessed and I came for that. And she said, but she came and worshiped him, pleading again. Lord, help me. I know your disciples don't respect me. I know you gave me the silent treatment, it looks like. But you're telling me I'm not an Israelite, I'm a Canaanite, and I know we're evil. But Jesus, I'm going to take this to a whole nother level. I was just pleading before, but let's go ahead. I'm going to take this to a whole nother level. I'm going to start worshiping you in you. And if you thought I was, I wasn't loud before, I let it, Lord, help me. Let's take our praise to a whole nother level because I'm not leaving here until I get my miracle. Yeah. 
So first she was just pleading. But now she's worshiping. And look what she says here. Lord, help me. <laughs> you know what that means? Don't let your faith get weaker just because you're running into some resistance. That's not faith. Come on. You, your faith, come on. If you're fighting for something, my faith don't get weaker. You push me away. I'm coming stronger. But you're not going to stop my faith. I'm believing that my daughter, I have a vision that my daughter is going to be set free from this torment and demon. And today's the day and you're the answer. Okay. Tenacious Tammy. It gets worse. Can it get worse? It's getting worse. When you want big breakthroughs, you're going to have to have some tenacious faith. And tenacious faith doesn't get offended because it's not focused on offense. It's focused on a miracle. I'm going to get offended with Jesus and he's my answer? I know who he is. He's the son of David. You know what I know? I know about him. Maybe you all don't know who he is. He's the promised Messiah. When he was saying the son of David, he was, she knew. Maybe the other people around her didn't know who he, he was. He was the one that was prophesied. He was the savior of the world. I know who he is. So right now you might be offended and telling me, if I were you, I'd just leave. You would leave because you don't know who he is. But I know he's good. And I know he's powerful. And I know right now there might be some offensive, immature disciples around him. And maybe he's saying something, but it's drawing what's in me out. And what that means, the more I wait, the more it's drawn me out. And what's, what's being drawn out of me is some tenacious faith. I'm not leaving here. I am going to stick this out until I see my, my baby healed. Some will say warfare. Okay. So she began to worship and plead, right? Lord, help me. Now Jesus responds again. It's getting worse. This is what Jesus says. I'm telling you, he's trying to pull faith out of her to teach us a lesson. All God's saying, all Jesus is saying, look, if she did it, you can do it. This story could end in so many bad ways. She could have said, Jesus, she could have just said this. I talked to Jesus, he ignored me. Let's call it a day. I tried Jesus. He ignored me. I tried getting involved in church. They didn't call me. I walked in the hallway, Pastor Marco. He knew I was there. He didn't even say, hi, fake. He's fake. <laughs> He's fake. I asked him my name. He didn't know my name. I've been here for like three weeks. <laughs> He's fake. Jesus is not fake. He's real. But there's some miracles that right now God wants to do in your life, but you're going to have to, come on, get some deeper faith to get your breakthrough. You're giving up too quick. Come on, you're getting offended too quick. The second thing going to happen, the story could have ended. Jesus didn't answer me. I was good with that. Maybe he was thinking. But his disciples, they showed me he, what he was thinking. See, I might like Jesus, but I don't like those disciples. Like, pastor, I like you, but I don't like your leaders. He could have said that. I heard them talking about me, that I'm bugging them. I thought you were the savior of the world. What, what, what kind of training you got up in here? Is that how you train your disciples? I mean, it'll be a call like, is that how you train your disciples? Like, uh, is that what, is that, is, is that behind the scenes, this is reflecting you, and this is, that could have ended that way. But and then Jesus says, no. You're not an Israelite. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Now you draw on the line. And now your story could be, man, that Jesus is so prejudiced. Oh, my gosh. God's, come on. God's trying to pull something out of you. 
Come on, there's a way, but God's getting, I got big breakthrough. This lady right here did not just get a breakthrough with her daughter getting healed and set free from demons, but this lady right now is in the Chronicles of the Bible, and we're going to read about her for eternity. She's right now, in this year, right now, speaking to us, and she's telling us, come on, I got through that. You could get through what you're going through. Don't you get offended. Don't you quit. Jesus has it for you. So now, it gets worse. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. <laughs> did you just call me a dog? <laughs> did you, you, what, did you, Jesus, the Messiah, huh, call me a dog. <laughs> How many know that would have been the end of you? Like, 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 all right, there. I'm done with this, man. Girl, you're going to have to stay possessed. Like, I can't handle this. I cannot handle this process. You see what I'm going through, baby? No, but can you see what I'm going through? Some of us right now are leaving the demon in place because you can't get through the process. Well, they call me a dog. Or, <laughs> now, let's see what tenacious face looks like. Do you know why this is an example to us? Because this is so extreme that probably you'll never go through something like this. But all he's saying, if she got, she got through a process, don't you give up on your prayer. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you give up on Jesus. Don't you give up on ministry. Don't you give up on your purpose. Don't, come on, don't leave with a devil story. Leave with a testimony. Right now, someone is fighting for a breakthrough, and God says, I need more tenacious. Come on, Christians here in the house. So now, okay, she's, she, she's tenacious. So I can't give the food from the children to the dog. She goes, okay, let's play with that. I'm a dog. I'm okay. I'm here for my daughter. So whatever you want to call me, I'm a dog. I'm a sinner. We all dogs. Who let the dogs out? I, I let them out. I'm one of them. <laughs> Say what you want. Cheer out. What? What? Whatever you need right now, we're going to get my breakthrough. My daughter's going, ah, we're going to get her free. You're the answer. You're going to get her free. Jesus, call me a dog. Ruff, ruff, ruff. She's, she's cool. She replied, that's true. I'm a dog but I'm leaving my baby free. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. Master, call me a dog, but give me some scraps because right now I need a breakthrough for my baby. I'm not leaving here without her free. Scrap, 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 scrap. Tenacious Tammy, something else. <laughs> Think about it. Maybe you've aborted many miracles. Maybe you've aborted growth, transformation. Some of your family is going to set free and delivered because you gave up right before your breakthrough. The temptation seems like it got worse and worse, but I do know this. When the pressure is the highest, you are the closest. It looks bad. One, two, three, four. We're going to keep hitting at this, but look what Jesus says. I love this. Dear woman, <laughs> baby, Jesus said to her, 
Your faith is great. Your faith is great. Matter of fact, I've not seen this kind of faith anywhere. And I travel 50 miles to display it to my disciples and to the future generations. So I traveled all this way because I knew what you had in you. I was not trying to make it hard on you. I already knew what you had in you. And I was going to get you a miracle. But I wasn't just going to get you a miracle. I was going to get a whole bunch of people miracles. Thousands of people miracles. Millions of people miracles. Baby, I'm going to use your story over and over and show people how to fight. And I'm going to use you as an example. When you start this fight, you don't give up this fight. When you believe in Jesus, you stick it out until you get your breakthrough. Dear woman, she said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. Now, don't downplay your situation. If your daughter's possessed and she's not living right, or your son ain't living right, stop whitewashing what they got. They're sinners, they're addicted, they're not living right, they're perverted, admit it and go to Jesus for transformation. Stop covering up your stuff, admit what you got, identify what you got and go to the answer, go to the great physician, go to the one that can save, go to the one that can deliver. And God is saying, I know she's demon possessed and it might have been your fault, mama, but that's okay. I got some mercy, I got some grace, I got some power, but I need you to bring me some tenacious faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was instantly healed. You know what happened? She came back. The smile came back. The innocence came back. The health came back. She looked her in the eye one moment. And she saw demons, and she saw depression, and she saw suicide, and she saw hopelessness, and she saw evil, and she saw addiction, and she saw lust, and she was just looking in her eye, and it was just evil, and she was in contortions, and she was in torment, and she was in pain, and then Jesus says, you got it. And then the demon left, and this young lady, I'm sure hugged her mama, and I'm sure mama hasn't had a hug from her baby for a long period of time. And I'm sure her daughter just hugged mama, mama, thank you for interceding and praying for me. I was so dark and so hurting. Thank you for bringing me to Jesus and not giving up on me and my dream. I could have never did it without you, mama. Thank you. What I'm saying is, that's what ministry is all about. It's not you just getting a breakthrough. There's people out there hurting and broken and they can't fight. And that's where we come in as a church and that's why we're going to Arizona and we're going to Kenya and we're going to Compton and we're going to the hood and we're going to your family and we're going to your relatives. They can't fight yet, but we can. And I understand, as tenacious Tammy could go through it, I could get through the little warfare I'm going through. You could call me whatever you want to call me, but I'm going to get my breakthrough. I know what I'm here for. I'm believing for something. And I'm going to get it. How many, come on, believing for something, you're going to get it. Let's all stand up. God is good. One more praise to Jesus. Come on, he came through and he showed us tenacious Tammy. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dismiss in just a second, guys. Keep coming to church and bring somebody. They might not want to come, but you can intercede for them. And come on. I give you a free happy meal afterwards. Come on. Come on. You need a breakthrough. You cuckoo. You got little demons working there. No, I'm just kidding. And you do it because you love people. And I preach my whole heart out because I love you. God loves you.
I'm never going to stop praying for people because it's through my prayers that someone else might get their breakthrough. I, it might not look like nothing's happening, but God says it's happening. Because the moment you call on me, I already knew how well this was going to end. I just need you to keep going. Come on, just keep going. Don't you give up. You, if you fall down, get back up. Don't give up. But maybe today, tonight, you're here on this Wednesday night. This is a night that your life can totally turn around. And you might be saying, man, I'm going through a major, major thing in my life right now. If you are tenacious Tammy, I just, my name for her. Maybe in heaven, they'll say, this is Tammy. I, I told you, I told you that's her name. No, but you might be going through something right now and, you, and maybe you felt like giving up or you're almost offended out of your process. And you're ready to take on a story that wasn't your story. And you were going to say how bad it was and you're going to start criticizing, get bitter, bitter. And God says, that's not the story. The story was, I almost gave up. It wasn't easy, but I knew Jesus was the answer and nothing was going to stop me. I'm going through it. I'm going to overcome this thing. This thing is, this thing is leaving. This, this thing right here is going to turn around in Jesus' name. Now, you might be going through that thing like it's hard right now. It's difficult. What I want you to do, if that's you, I'm going through a really, really tough one right now. We're going to pray right now. And this is what we're going to do. The Bible says that each man is given a measure of faith. And I want you to exercise your faith. But if you're saying that to me, I'm going through something really serious right now. I need a breakthrough. And I don't know what your breakthrough is. It might be in your family, it might be personal. I want you to come up here real quick because we're going to start the process of turnaround right now. But you got to go ahead, just like the lady, she came to Jesus. Jesus came to her, she came to Jesus. She stepped out. I don't know, come on. She stepped out and she says, I need a breakthrough. I'm going to Jesus. I'm going to shout. I'm going to yell. I'll go crazy. But I'm not leaving the same way. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, someone's life's going to turn around right now because you're putting your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. Come on, put your faith in Jesus. He can change you. He can set you free. He can make you new. Man. You guys ready? Are you ready? You got to fight for your kids. You got to fight for your future. You got to fight for ministry. There's always going to be offensive people. Like what? Man, I was offended where? Where were you offended? I was offended in church, okay. Did you let it stop you? No, it didn't let me. Nah, man, I kept going. My faith was in Jesus, not in no person. <laughs> they got issues just like me. I'm okay. I'm going forward. I got thick skin. I got Jesus. I'm good. I know what I'm, what I'm here for. I'm focused. All right? Because it's so funny how people get offended out of church and they get offended with Jesus, but they don't get offended out of Walmart. You don't get offended out of your clubs. You go to a club, I mean, people cussing at you. You're like, so what? Next, next week, I'm coming back. Come on, fight. Fight. Okay. I got one more call. This is a real serious call. One more call. And some of you right here, making the, and you're giving your life to Jesus right now because Jesus is calling you. You're, you're like that lady that right now, you're bringing your life to the Lord and God's going to save you right now, make you a new person. And if someone's asked, are you saved? What, what was the day I got saved? It was this day. It was around 8.30. I got saved that Wednesday night. I came to church. Some crazy Puerto Rican pastor said something. I don't know what happened, but something started moving in me. I started acting. That's the day I called on Jesus, and he saved me. Come on, are you ready to serve Jesus? Come on, come on, are you ready to come on? God to do great miracles through you too? Okay, now, I, I'm gonna give one more shot. I'm going to ask you this question. This is very important. Jesus is saying this to you. This is what he's saying to you. Come, follow me. Now, when he says, come, follow me, you could say, 
yes, I'll follow you. Or no, I won't. But only those that receive the call to follow him and receive the forgiveness, the freedom, and new life that he offers. Get it? Jesus wants to give you eternal life. You come the way you are. He loves you. He cares for you. You come with your addiction. You come with, come on, you come with your failures. You come with your mistakes. You come to Jesus. He'll forgive you of every wrong thing you've ever done. And he'll give you a new life. A new beginning. All God wants is a relationship with you. He said you've been following the drugs. You've been following the girls. You've been following the guys. You've been following this. You've been following all that. God says, stop following that. Follow me. Let me show you how to live. Come on, follow me. And you can say yes. And if you say yes, Jesus will forgive you, save you, set you free, and give you eternal life. If you say no, Jesus can't save you. You'll never have eternal life. You'll be separated from God now and forever in hell forever. And that would be your choice. He says, I came to you, but you rejected me. I came to save you, but you said no. Today's your day. If you're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I died right now, go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want a new life. I feel like I'm living in a hell. Something has to change. Give your life to Jesus. When I count to three, if you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand. One, come on, this is your choice. Say yes. Raise your hand. You're saying yes. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this place. I want to give my life to Jesus. All these hands here. I see the hand. Young man, come up here. Come up here. Come on, anybody else over here? Come up here real quick. Come up here. You just raise your hand. Come up here real quick. Come on. Come up here real quick. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming forward. We got a lot of people giving their lives to Jesus here. Come on, church. Come on, this is exciting. People are getting saved. spending some time here because to rush this moment would be silly. You matter to me. You matter to God. And this decision you're making. Jesus, I'm tired of doing it my way. If you could do anything with a person like me, do it, Lord. And God says, I can't. I can't. God says, you believe in you're saying to God, you believe in me? He goes, of course. You think I died? God, I didn't believe in you, rose from the dead. Of course I believe in you. I believe in you more than anybody who believes in you. And I got a plan for you, and I'll help you. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Follow Jesus. If you're giving your life to Jesus, there's another step. You're gonna get baptized. I was repent of your sins, turn away from your sins, stop following your way. Follow Jesus and get baptized. We're going to help you grow. You're joining our family today. Not just a church. You're joining our family. Our Father in heaven. And we're his children. Come on. We're his children. Come on. We're his children. You're his child. Right now we pray. Let's pray. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved right now. Call on Jesus. You're going to be saved right now. You're going to be made whole. Jesus coming into your heart. You're going to be forgiven. We're going to give God all the problems. You're going to give all God all the problems. We're going to plead, Jesus, help me. He's going to help you. Let's pray. Say, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, for doubting you, for e being easily offended. I let it go. I ask you now, Lord, save me. Set me free. Make me a new person. Fill me now with your spirit. Change my heart. I receive the free gift of eternal life. From this day forward, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior. And I give you all my problems, all my struggles. And I thank you that I'm safe with you. I receive healing, victory, peace, joy, and eternal life. 
Use me, Lord, to help others that are suffering. I'm saved. I'm born again. And I'll follow you, Jesus, for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. I want everybody to stay here. We're going to pray with you. Make sure you get your breakthrough.